Hello everyone. So Salesforce recently introduced a new feature called Sockel Query Builder. And in this post, I am going to share you how you can configure that Sockel Query Builder and get full advantage of that. And this is a new feature which is available kind of an extension to the VS Code, uh, Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio Code is the recommended uh, editor for doing the Salesforce development. So to give you a background before doing before this, you know, Sockel Query Builder, which is currently in a beta state, uh, all Salesforce developer, they uh, when they're dealing with any Sockel Query, either they will go to uh, the workbench or the developer console uh, to run their SQL thing, right? SQL Query and execute and test and all this thing, right? But the problem with that approach is like you know when you are doing uh, some development in a in an editor, uh, you don't want to switch back from multiple uh, applications to uh, do your development or to twist your query, right? So uh, I think to uh, eliminate that problem, Salesforce so come up with the solution that now while you you are writing your coding, writing your code and everything in the VS Code, you can run the SQL query, test your SQL query right in the Visual Studio Code so, do you, so that you don't need to jump from one application to another application. And to me, this is a very good feature and I am quite sure that not only me, like, you know, Many other developers are uh, actually w was w was waiting for this uh, new feature. So without any further delay, I'm going to tell you how you can uh, take full advantage of this one. Uh, so first, when you open this Visual Studio Code, you need to go to this. Uh, you need to go to this extension window and then search for SOQL. And the, you will find two options here, SOQL and another one, so I suppose SOQL editor, uh, but you need to install this one, not the second one like this one, which is provided by the Salesforce. The always good part is like, you know, uh, here, you, you, you will realize like who, actually, who, uh, who created this extension, right? So for example, this is the name of the, ex, uh, name of the extension and it was created by uh, Salesforce. So you need to come here and you need to, here will be an option called install. Here will be an option called install. So you need to install that. For me, I've already installed that. So that's why it's showing as uninstall. Once you do that, what you need to do, you need to go to your uh, Visual Studio code. You need to close and open, though it's not mandatory, uh, but I always saw that every time you install a new extension, it is always, uh, it is always good to restart the Visual Studio code so that you can, uh, but your, your extension will work perfectly. Sometimes I, I saw that, you know, without that restart, uh, whatever I'm expecting, whatever I was expecting from that uh, extension, I'm not getting full out of that. So it's always recommended that every time you install any extension, go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, uh, just, you know, restart your Visual Studio code. So once you have done that, you will come back to your uh, this explorer here where you'll find all your code and everything you'll find there is an option there is a there is a folder called script and this folder will have two nested folder one called apex and one called sql so this is the place where you will write all your sql statements and uh, it, this is basically writing you know storing all your sql statements and you know uh, doing uh, testing of your sql statement whether they're good and then you can import those in your apex class or your batch class or whatever like you know in, in your lightning web component where method and everything right the thing that you need to keep in mind any sql uh, file that you'll be storing here it should have an extension called .sql. That's the only thing that you need to keep in mind. Once you store that, like, you know, let me create a new SQL. So let me create a SQL for contact, contact.soql. So that's the only thing that you need to keep in your mind. So the moment you do that, it will open in this way. So here is a catch. When I install this one, it was not opening in this format. It's very important to make sure like it, it opens in this format. So for me, when I was installed this one, it was opening in this way. It was opening in this way, let's say, uh, it was opening this way, but I don't want to open my SQL in this way. I want, to op I want to open my SQL in the new SQL editor, right? So there are two ways to do that. You can always right click on your file click on open with and then click on and select that SQL builder, which will open your SQL in this way. 
But this is that this is something that you need to do every time to make sure that SQL opens in the SQL window, SQL editor, right? And uh, I don't, I, I don't like that, you know, uh, clicking on SQL every time and you know selecting in which uh, uh, editor it should open. So the quick solution for that, you can always go back to your code and preferences and then settings from your code preferences and settings. And then in your search window, search for files.association, something like that, yeah, files.association, and add an item. What it is telling uh, that you want to open your SOQL, and this is a type of SOQL. So any 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 file which is uh, which is having an extension of SQL, you are telling VS Code any file which is a, which is having an extension of SQL is a type of SQL file, and then you click on OK, and that's all you need to do. Going forward, every time there is an SQL file, you click that and it will open in this format. So good, so that part is solved. With that, what you can do, you can see like it's a very easy, you know, kind of a uh, kind of a drag and drop or select uh, user interface, right? And I really appreciate that user interface. So what you can do now from this from option, you can select which uh, object you want to, which object you want to query. Uh, don't confuse it with the name. It's account, but you can still do a query from, let's say, contact, right? You can still do a query from our case, anything. You can still do a query from case. It doesn't matter like the from and the name of the file uh, not necessarily has to be the same. So let's say for the time being, it's an account. And these are all the fields that you have, right? So let's say I select ID, name and type. Right, it came here, and the, you see, like the moment I select those files, those are automatically coming here. Then the good part is, like, I can do an order by. I can do an order by with all this one, and I can put a limit also. Like, I want five. I want only five. I want only ten. Right, all the things. Like, you know, if you are very familiar with Workbench, all the stuffs that you are you are currently doing with the workbench, you can do right on your VS Studio code. So you don't need your workbench uh, for writing your SQL statement at all. So let's say uh, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to get the ID name and type from the account and the order by is the created date, right? I want to do an order by with the created date and then yeah, it's came as order by created date and then I click on run query. What it will do, it ran the query right on the VS Studio, VS Studio code, and this is my query. And the good part is like is, I it's have if, if there is a good amount of data for me like there are 63 data in my developer org, so it came all right and it came all in this way. I can go here. I, mean, I can go into the multiple pages and find out. Or the good part, which I really like, I can download this entire data set as a CSV or a JSON file. If I don't want to see all the file, I can always limit thing. The moment I put ten, the query change. The query is having that limit ten, and now if I run the query, it shows me only the ten data only the 10 records, right? And I can, again, I can do the, C, I can export those, this data set as a CSV or as a JSON. I'm going to put the link of my blog post in the short description of this video. So if you like this video, please like and share with others. Also, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get instant notification on all my future videos. Thank you guys.